So if we take a look at our column at A1, if I wanted to scroll in here and move this dimension, what I can do is come in here and hover over it until it highlights in yellow, and I can click left click on my mouse and drag. As you can see, you can drag it left or right, or you can move it up and down. If I wanted to change something about this dimension text, I could simply just come up to the text and double click on it. And this would bring up our edit dimension window. And in here, we can change things like our origin. Do we want a border around it? Do we want an underline or strike through? We can set our justification if that's left, center, or right. We can change our pen color. We can change things like our fonts, what our font style is, if that's bold or regular. And then here is where we can change our font size and then our font aspect ratio. And then we can also specify our rotation. I also have the same exact options for our secondary dimensions. So if I had a another dimension down below this line, or let's say I wanted to add one in, I can click down here in this text box. And for now, I'll just say test. If I would click OK to this, then we can see that that gets added underneath our dimension. I don't want that to be there, so I'm going to go ahead and edit this dimension again, and I'm just going to delete this out. Below here, we can change which view that text is associated with. We can change our layer that this dimension is associated with. Because I've made changes to this layer, it has automatically put it to the user adjusted layer. We can either have that set to detail rule annotations, our reference dimension layer, our user annotation layer, our system annotation layer, or our outline layer. For now, I'm going to change this back to our system annotation layer. Change what our work point ID is. We can change the size of dimension terminals. Do we want breakable dimension legs? We can limit left leg length to and our right leg length to. Off to the right, our force expansion offset on neither leg, right top leg, left bottom leg, or both legs. And then we can also set the pen color down there below. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to this window. And now we're back with the original dimension that I had. I can also move and drag labels the same way. So let's see, we can see here that this label is actually interfering with this dimension line. So I can just simply left click and drag this label to bring it out a little bit more. And I can do that for my label here as well. If we wanted to change the rotation of these labels, we can do that in a couple of different ways. If I double click on this label, we can go in here under our section size and specify our rotation degrees. Right now it's at 45. Say so if I change that to zero and say okay, we can see that that rotation changes. Now there are also a couple different ways that we can do this. If I hit the control button on my keyboard and then I left click on this label and drag my mouse around, I can see that I can change the rotation in this manner as well. Now, if I say I rotate it there, I can see that this is at a weird rotation degree, so 12.8477, and that's not really a precise rotation. So if I wanted to rotate that in a different manner, I could also hit Shift-Control 
and then left click on that label and then what I can do is rotate my mouse around and it will rotate that in 45 degree increments. If we wanted to, we could come in here and change our dimensions and how we see those lines being dimensioned to. So if I come in here and just click on this leg here of this dimension, I can see that if I drag this out, our dimension will automatically change. So this is kind of a smart dimension type thing. If I get close to this, the outside of this ba base plate here, it wants to automatically snap to that. So you can zoom in and you can snap to different sorts of things. Right now that was going to our anchor bolts. Uh, but let's say we didn't pick something like that and we left click and we get a different dimension here than what we want. In drawing editor, unlike in our modeling screen or our modeling window, we do have the ability to undo. So let's say I wanted to come up here and underneath clipboard, we have this undo arrow. Contro Control Z also works for this. So we can either hit Control Z on our keyboard or we could come up here and hit undo. And as you can see, that dimension automatically changes back to what it was before. Your undo will always undo your most recent command. If I would come in here and edit this dimension and I say freeze label, I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to this. Now if we try to change this dimension leg, we can see that no matter where I drag that to, that 165 is gonna stay the same. So if I drag it clear out to here, that dimension will always be froze because we specified that to be frozen. So again, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna click undo so that my dimension line goes back to where it was. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna unfreeze that label and I will say okay. The next thing we'll take a look at is adding in our own dimensions. So I'm gonna zoom out and I let's say we want to maybe add a dimension in here specifying how far away this base plate is to this base plate over here. Now drawing editor is going to follow the same style of ribbons as it did as our modeling window did. So up top we have our different pages. We have drafting, drawings, display, import, export, and then we have a reports page. So within all of those pages we have our different sections. So we have drawings, clipboard, navigate, layout, draw, annotations, tools, standards, and bill of material. So inside of our annotations we have a dimension add or as you can see our F3 key on our keyboard would run that command. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on this. Once I run the dimension add we can see that our contextual ribbon for our snaps and modifiers will come up like it did in our modeling window. So let's say in this case I want to use my auto point snap. So the little horseshoe icon turns on our auto point. And now in our status line, we can see we want to add dimension points one. So let's say we want to pick the edge of this base plate. And let's just pick the other edge of this base plate here as well for our point number two. Once we pick that, then we can drag out off into space and it will automatically fill out that distance accordingly. So I can place this, I can either have the ability to place it as an actual dimension, or if I move my mouse up, we can place that as a vertical dimension. So let's just say I wanna place that here. I will left click on my mouse again to locate the dimension line. So if I left click here, then you can see it will continue. So if we wanted to come up here and pick a different point, 
and say we want to go to the intersection of this, we can go ahead and add our dimension point 3 to locate that dimension as well. Or if we didn't want that, what we could do is we could either right click or we could hit escape on our keyboard to escape out of that dimension add. Now as you can see, we still have our dimension add tool active because it wants us to select points. So I could come over here and I could pick another point to add a dimension. So let's say we just want to do this one. I could do the same thing. I could locate that dimension here. I want that to be vertical, so I'm going to move my mouse up. And then I just want to escape on my keyboard to get out of that. And now we have our two dimensions added in for those base plates. To get out of the add dimension tool, we can just escape on our keyboard. And we are back to our regular drawing editor. So now we can take a look at a couple different options we can use while adding in dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take these dimensions and I'm just going to delete them off. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run our add, our dimension add tool again. And as you can see, this left side toolbar options like it did in modeling, it will populate with the most recently used. So I'm going to go ahead and run that command again. And then down here, if we're looking at our button bindings, if I press shift, that will change our button bindings to what the command wants us to do. So if I hit shift, we can see that our left click turns into actual and our middle click turns into drag off. So let's just say I wanted to come down here and I press shift on my keyboard and I middle click. Now what it's asking us for is to select a side for a dimension. So if I come over here, I can see that it wants me to select a line. So if I select this line, for example, it automatically is going to take that line. And now I can just drag off that dimension to a spot where I want to locate that dimension line. So I'll locate that here. So we can see, since I'm still in the dimension add tool, if I hit my shift button, it gives us the actual dimension for left click, our drag off dimension for middle click. If I hit control, our left click turns into an arc dimension, our middle click gives us an angle dimension, and if I would hit shift and control at the same time, our left click would turn into an actual dimension, our middle click would be a vertical dimension, and our right click would be a horizontal dimension. So by using our button bindings, we can predetermine what type of dimension that we want to add. Or if we come in here and choose just two random points, we can drag our mouse around and we can, the system will try to decide what type of dimension it wants to add in there. So between actual, horizontal, vertical, you can make that whatever type of dimension you want to. And then say if I want to locate it out there, I can come in here and I can drag these dimensions around however I would need to. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these dimensions that we just added and I will delete these out. And if we wanted to, we could go around and see if we want to add any more dimensions or move any marks around or labels around. For right now, I think that has it laid out pretty well for us.